welcome back students today we will be starting a series of lectures on a fresh topic it is inference lines for indeterminate frames so what is the reason behind selecting a topics in inference line diagram for indeterminate frames specifically so what is the difference when we do the ild for determinate beams right so if you, if you have a quick recap of inference lines so we know that inference lines are a powerful tool which is used for analyzing structure subjected to moving loads so basically ild is a diagram showing variation of a function say this function can be anything like reaction melting moment at a section shear force at a section or even a displacement at a section so ild shows the variation of such functions as a unit load moves across from one end to the other end of a beam right so from ild you can find the position of load which causes a maximum value of such function so it can be useful for analyzing structure subjected to moving loads right so if you check for for the formal definition inference line is a curve the ordinate to which at any point equals to the value of the function due to a unit load acting at that point right so when a unit load is acting at a point what is the value of a function at that point value of a function will be marked as an ordinate at that point right so that's what inference lines so here from definition it's clear that there is no discrimination between determinate beams and indeterminate beams from the ild definition right so it should be said that it is possible to draw ild for both determinate as well as indeterminate beams clear so what is the difference here so if you check on these diagrams this is like first left hand column is for indeterminate beams and right hand column is determinate you can see this is a two span bridge so two span beam which means that it is indeterminate to de one degree right and in the right hand side these beams are made determinate by including a hinge this green dots you are seeing is actually a hinge so when you provide an hinge you get an extra e equation thereby you can remove that indeterminacy right so if you quickly compare between these two diagrams you can find out that the ild for determinate beams is always piecewise linear which means that ild for determinate beams always contains straight lines okay which it is discontinuous it is piecewise however it is always uh, linear diagrams right here of course you can see it's a linear diagram right but if you compare with the ild for indeterminate beams it is to be noticed that the ild is no more linear it is a combination of curve and linear lines okay so this is the basic difference when you compare ild for determinate and indeterminate beams right so why we choose this topic is like it should be possible to draw ild for indeterminate beams also however this is slightly more complex and tedious to do right okay so now let's see the methods we have for drawing inference line diagram for indeterminate beams so we have basically two methods that is static equilibrium method and the well-known muller bristol principle which is used in determinate analysis also right so static equilibrium method gives a actual real quantitative ild by quantitative i means you get the exact value at each of the points right however this is more rigorous and this is more tedious to do so they base in static equilibrium method we basically use the force or equilibrium method such as consistent deformation method which we use for analyzing the indeterminate beams right so what we do is by using such methods we calculate the reaction or the function for each position of the 
unit load. We'll try out select three to four percent of unit load. For each of the unit load, we'll find out the reaction or whatever function we are drawing in ILD, and then we'll start plotting the ILD. Okay. The second one is molar bristle principle, which is quite popular when we learn for ILD for determinate units. So you all know that molar bristle principle will go give only a qualitative ILD. However, that is a quick method of drawing ILD. By qualitative, I can say that you can actually get the shape of the ILD only, right? So what we do here is like the inference line diagram is drawn by applying displacement corresponding to the function. Okay, so we'll see the method in detail. So what is molar bristle principle say? So if we quickly recap, the molar bristle principle states that the inference line diagram for a function is to the same scale as the departure shape of the B. Okay, when acted upon by the function. So it basically means that if you are drawing a ILD for any of the function, all you have to do is apply that function on the B and then find the departure shape. Okay. So this deflection shape will be having the same shape as that of the final ILD for that particular function. Okay. So in order to get the deflection shape, what should be done is that actually the capacity of the beam to resist that particular function should have been removed. Okay. Then only we will apply that particular function so that the beam will deflect accordingly. Right quickly some examples here let's start with this like we have a two span bridge it is indeterminate to one degree right so if you want to draw ILD for reaction at A so what you quickly do is that there is a restraint RA is actually a restraint so we will quickly remove that restraint which means that this A is now a free end right once the reaction is removed what you have to do next is you have to apply a unit displacement of rotation to the release structure in the direction and the location of the function so RA was acting upward so corresponding to RA I will give a unit displacement in the same direction so I give unit displacement at RA okay so if you give this displacement the entire structure has to deflect right so while deflecting the structure should also make sure that it obeys all the uh, that kinematic conditions, right? Compatibility conditions, which seems like the theta at this point and slope at this point should be same, right? So the only possible shape it can occur is this. So by this we can quickly get the shape of an ILD, right? And also we note that this is not a linear curve; it is a curved linear curve. Okay. Secondly, it is the same beam, but thing is you have to find out the shear force at E, ILD for shear force at E. So first thing we have to do is we have to remove the capacity of the beam to resist shear at E. So in order to do that, what we do is we we'll cut the beam into two parts and place a roller at E or a sliding device at E, which means that and then apply positive shear at the point, which means that a downward shear at left and upward shear at right side okay so when we do this e point is free to move vertically upward and vertically downward based on the force applied on it right because it is a roller on y axis okay so when we do that and find the deflector shape we can see that the beam will is going to deflect something like this okay here also while deflecting it should obey the combated conditions which are like at this point at c at B and at A, the vertical displacement delta should be zero, and also the slope BC theta BC and slope B A should be same. So we have same theta here and same theta here, right? Same thing we go for when we do for ILD for a bending moment. So when we a finding bending moment, ILD for bending moment, if you remove the beam's capacity to resist bending moment at E, it means that we included a hinge at E, 
okay so it now becomes a hint and at inch we will apply a positive unit couple okay so now the beam will rotate something like this so this is the deflector shape right here also you can see that it obeys all the edge placement compatibility conditions so theta c is equal to 0 theta b is equal to 0 theta a is equal to 0 sorry delta deflection at c equal to 0 delta c delta b and delta a is equal to 0 also rotation theta b c is equal to theta b a okay so this is a more example on the same topic here we have a five span continuous beam and we are asking to find out the in front line diagonal for reaction at a a y so what we do is we will remove the support a and apply a unit displacement one net gain so correspondingly the other beam should deflect obeying the compatibility condition so compatibility condition here is delta f equal to 0 delta e equal to 0 delta d is equal to 0 delta c is equal to 0 delta b equal to 0 right and also the thetas of adjacent span slope of adjacent span should be equal right so the theta will also be compatibility condition for theta should also be um, respect right so that's it like when we find for b we apply unit displacement at b and consider all other such restraint so we get shape something like this similar for c also then for b what we did was so here what we did is in front line diagram for shear force at x so at this x position we included a roller then applied positive shear so left side goes downward and right side goes upward okay here we in order to draw the bending moment for ILD for bending moment we included a hinge at x and applied positive moment so the entire thing moves up and the remaining curve will be obeying the restraining condition or compatibility conditions right now let's see what is the static equilibrium method so this is more likely to say it's a more rigorous and tedious method so what we actually do here is like let's say take a proper cantilever for example it is also written indeterminate to one degree right so let's say that we are trying to find out the inference line diagram for by which is reaction at b vertical reaction at b right so let's take this as the redundant okay so what we do here is like we'll pick some points on the beam say this one this one and this one okay and for each of these points we will place the unit load and then we will find out the what is the reaction b by so this can be done by any of the force method we know like compatibility condition so like the consistent deformation method right so initially place the unit load at say halfway and find out the reaction by you get a value that value will be placed here at the half then place the unit load somewhere here let's say in the 3 by 4th span now obtain what is the b by value you get a value you will plot that b by value at 3 by 4th of the span okay now we place the unit load at here 1 by 4th of the span you get a value of b by you will plot that value of b by here in the inference line diagram so if you connect all these values what you're going to get finally is actually the inference line diagram for b by so how did we found out this b by by can we use method of superposition as we used in the consistent deformation method right so what we did was like we'll remove the redundant so that we have a release structure right it's a cantilever and we'll subject unit load sorry external load which here in this case is a unit load so we'll find what is the deflection corresponding to the redundant which is delta bx okay so this is the deflection 
correspond to return and due to external load okay and then we will do we'll apply a unit load corresponding to redundant and find the displacement that corresponds to redundant so that is delta pp now we can apply compatibility condition at p it says like delta bx plus delta bb times by should be equal to zero from this we can find out what is by by is nothing but delta bx by delta bb okay so by this method you can find out what is the redundant reaction okay so this is the basic concept of static equilibrium method so that previous slide is explained here in words okay the thing to note is that once we find out the redundant values it is easy to analyze once we know the redundant you can find the reaction other than okay so after finding the reaction other than the redundance by static equilibrium you can also find out the shear force values bending moment values of it each of the section so thing is that once you have the ild for redundant you can use the relation of any of the function with the redundant to draw the ild for that particular function using the ild of the redundant right so all we need to do is we will have to find a simple relationship between the redundant reaction and the function which we have to ild the function for which we have to draw the ild okay so the relation which the redundant bears with the function the exact same relation will the ild of the function bears with the redundant ild of the redundant no so that's it for today's lecture in next lecture we will start doing problems drawing the ild for reaction and drawing the ild for she shear force bending moment etc okay so we will see one by one so thank you